Hello, my name is Matt Buckingham and I'm a lecturer here at Staffordshire University on the BA Honours Illustration Award programme. Today I'm going to give you a 30 minute creative challenge where you're going to be pushed to create some interesting characters. What you're going to need for this is some paper, some paint and any kind of drawing materials you can find. Pens, pencils, crayons, anything to get your imagination going. Okay, let's go. Okay, so what we're going to do here, this is going to be a prop, problem based design activity where it's going to get you to think differently with no preconceived ideas of character development. So, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to get some paint, it doesn't really matter what colour, I'm just going to use some uh, yellow. It can be any paint you want to use, or whatever you've got at your disposal. Disposal, I'm using watercolours here. If you want to use gouache or acrylic watered down, that's fine. I probably wouldn't use ink, no, no, sorry, oil, but you could use ink because oil is going to take a while to dry and we want this to be a fast activity. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close my eyes and I'm just going to make some blobs. And I'm going to make about four blobs of different shapes on this piece of paper. And I'm going to use some different colours for these blobs. So I've used obviously yellow to begin with. I'm going to use a bit of red now. And the key is to keep your eyes closed and just be free and fluid in the way that you make the movements. And let the paintbrush uh, do the work for you as well, because some interesting things can happen with the different paint brushes you use. I'm using quite a wide brush here, but you want, might want to experiment with some thin brushes, some really wide brushes, um, to get some different marks on the paper. But the key is, be quite fluid, be quite expressive with the marks you're going to make, because this is going to help inform some interesting character design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the sheet, and then when I've filled the sheet, a bit like Blue Peter, I'm going to wait till these dry. Okay, so my paint's dry now and I'm going to crack on with this character challenge. So what we're going to do here is a bit of problem-based design and we're going to do something where we're going to let the shape inform the character without really thinking too much about you know in advance what this character is going to be and the reason why this is really interesting because some some really unique results can come from this process that might take you down you know a really interesting character design that you would never have thought of without the blob to inform the shape and one of the things I want to really try and concentrate on here is, is using the blob as, as a tool that's going to give you some visual inspiration to develop this character forward. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to use both the inside of the blob shape to maybe inform some character and the exterior of the blob shape to also see how that can also have an influence on the characters we're designing. Um, I'm going to use a range of materials because I think one of the interesting things here as well is to think about how the material and the medium itself can also be a springboard for inspiration. It might be we're using some brush shape and the, the way that the brush makes the mark on the paper could lead to some really inventive ideas um, that could springboard ideas for the characters. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give myself um, three different topics to work towards. So I'm going to think of anything that's character based that's going to be human in form. I'm going to do one that is animal in form and potentially one that has got like a monster based theme. So I'm going to have a theme to work to, but everything else outside of that theme is going to be completely determined by the shape and the limits of my imagination. So let's go. Okay, so this is really fun exercise. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to be working on this sort of blob shape here. Now, one of the things I always try and do is, is don't try and come into this and think about, oh, you know, what could this be? I, I want to draw, you know, this idea um, in my mind of a certain character before I approach this. I think let yourself be free of thought and just let the blob inform the, sh the, the sort of character. So I'm going to be working on this one to begin with. And one of the things I like to do is look at things from different perspectives and angles. If you first can't work out a character shape from the initial blob. So I might turn the sheet around to see if something sparks a bit of you know creativity. And then when I've got an idea for something, I'm going to choose you know any one of the drawing materials that I've got at hand, or maybe a combination of a few different materials and mediums, and I'm just going to get drawing on this shape. So I'm going to start on this shape, and I can see there's some interesting kind of shapes here. Maybe this long thing could be a trunk. Maybe these could be ear shapes. So I'm going to work on that principle, and let's think of sort of like an elephant design. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to use the outside of the shape to completely inform this character that I'm going to develop. So 
obviously with an elephant, I'm going to draw a trunk, the tusks, and maybe some eyes. So I'm going to try and do this elephant. Maybe he's quite a somber looking elephant. Maybe quite sad for one reason or another. I don't know what that reason could be. And the nice idea about this is this can lead to some really interesting narrative ideas. So I've got this character now, this elephant, and this elephant is quite morose looking and sad. Now why is he morose looking and sad? And a really interesting story idea could come from this first initial iteration. Okay, so the next one, I'm going to keep with the theme of animals here. And this time I'm going to do this without looking at reference because I can probably revisit these characters a little bit later on and pick the elements out that I thought were really interesting and develop that character further. But I, quite, I kind of quite like to work without reference because again, if I'm working to reference, it can give me a preconceived idea of what that character might be. And in this case, I want it to be purely from my imagination. So I'm gonna kind of work on this character here. And again, it's got some interesting shapes. We've got an interesting kind of neck shape um, coming down from the character. And again, I'm gonna be using kind of a, a, a diff different medium here, a brush pen, and I'm going to keep it to the interior of the shape again. And I've got some really quite interesting shapes to develop. And one of the things I quite like to do as well is think about how the actual brush mark itself can lead to some interesting sort of character attributes that I wouldn't have thought of without using that medium or that blob to inform the character. So one of the nice things here on this shape is the way that the brush is kind of flicked up and left these kind of irregular ridges at the top of the area here. Now they could be quite interesting like fur elements of this character. So again, you know, I don't know what this character is going to be necessarily. It looks a little bit camel-esque. So again, I'm going to see how I could develop this character using these shapes and again what could this character become if I was going to develop this into a story and a narrative there's a very interesting or <laughs> strange looking sort of um, character maybe maybe not a giraffe shape uh, maybe like a, a goat potentially a billy goat so again if I'm thinking, one of the nice things I like to do is think about, well, how could this inform some kind of narrative and story? And, you know, this, this goat looks fairly, fairly shocked, um, potentially a little bit bemused. And again, how could that be developed and pursued further? OK, this time I'm going to do something a little bit different again. Now, on the first two characters, I've used the inside of the shape to inform, you know, the character and the design. This time I'm going to use the exterior of the blob shape. And again, it's random. I don't know what it's going to produce, but it might produce something really interesting to develop forward um, as a character. So this time I'm going to use a different drawing medium and I'm going to use a dip pen. Again, you can use whatever it is you want. And again, I'm going to think and look at the shape, look at the exterior of the shape and see some interesting marks or outlines that I could develop into a character shape. And one of the things I've noticed here is a really interesting kind of shape to the exterior. Now this could be quite an interesting nose shape that lead, leads into this interesting chin. And again, what could I do with this as a character using the exterior, exterior of this shape? Some really strange overly large forehead shape but again it could lead to a new character I could develop from this shape you know a new iteration I could redraw this character I could think about well what are the elements I do like which are the elements I don't like and I can obviously develop this things that I do like I may never have chose to draw a nose and forehead within this way without that character. So again, I can pick the bits that work and I can develop them further in other iterations. But it's given me something that is fairly unique that potentially I would never have come up with without this shape to inform this character. 
Okay, this time I've, um, I'm going to turn the paper around and look at something from a new, fresh angle to see if that gives me some inspiration um, to develop another interesting character from. I'm going to work on this shape now, and this time I'm going to work on both the interior and the exterior to see what's possible um, developing a character further forward. And what I'm going to do for this is I'm actually going to use um, a paintbrush again to vary the kind of mark making that I'm going to do, because that can add real depth and appeal to the character design I'm trying to create. So I'm going to look at this and I'm going to see what, what, what shapes I could use. And again, there's some really interesting shapes here. And one of the things that I like to start with and see within characters are nose shapes, because I think nose shapes are really quite expressive if we're trying to design a character. And again, there's some really interesting sort of shapes um, to the, the interior of this so we've got this really interesting nose shape coming down here. That was quite interesting. <laughs> My ink blob, blob dropped on the page. But again, random randomness has created me an eye. And that eye I could begin to work with and not worry about. Not thinking it's something that's gone wrong. It's quite interesting how that brush shape has just dripped onto the page. And that is allowing me to develop this character. And again, a completely random way than I would have originally intended it to be. So again, I've got some really interesting character shape. This character with this red nose, maybe it's somebody who's got a cold. Again, how could I develop that forward into some interesting potential narrative idea? And all of these things are springboards for other ideas and other projects. They started off as a blob, they turned into a character. You can then take that character further forward and potentially think of some environments and some situations to put them in and begin to plot and develop a narrative and a story from. Okay, so I've done two human character forms. I've done two animal character forms. I'm gonna do one more now, which is the monster theme. And again, I'm gonna use one of the blob shapes that's left to inform that monster. Um, this time, i am turn the page to get again to see if a different viewpoint and a different angle sparks some interest and creativity. And I'm gonna pick up a, another drawing medium and I'm just gonna get stuck in and see what happens. Use quite a thick, nice, um, sort of thick graphite crayon here. And again, with it, you know, the monster theme in the head, I'm not going to overthink it. I'm just going to let the blob inform the shape and I'm going to see what kind of happens here with a monster idea. So again, I'm going to look at this kind of shape at the top and I'm going to begin to draw a sketch into it. And some really quite interesting shapes again here. And I might use the interior and the exterior of the shape to create some kind of character and again you know I've got a, a kind of an idea now as I begin to draw maybe it's part dinosaur themed part monster and again I'm going to look at the inter interior of the shape and the way that the blob has made uh, a mark on the interior that could inform the character attribute and I don't know if you can see here because it's yellow but the way that you, the yellow paint the watercolor paint has just kind of dried within the center of the, the shape here it's got like a darker sort of edge to it and I'm going to use that to inform potentially the eye that I'm going to develop with this character because this could be a really interesting kind of eyeball that I'm putting in and again I'm not going to worry too much about the actual character because the beauty of this is I can begin to develop it further forward again next time I um, begin to, to draw this character. So we've got this quite strange shape <laughs> but I would never have thought of that shape and that character without that blob and one of the things I like to do as I've said before is I might get a new piece of paper now and I may begin to see well what could that develop further into. There may be elements that work and there may be elements that don't work and again I'm just going to be selective about the elements in the drawing that I want to take forward and develop into the character that may be a springboard for a future project at a future date. Okay so hopefully um, you can see the potential of this and I've had some fun there and there are a range of characters on this sheet, some potentially more successful than others but again, they are springboards to other ideas. And I think the really exciting thing about this is you never know what you're gonna get. And I think that keeps it responsive, it 
keeps it instinctive and really interesting. So give it a go, see what you can come up with. So hopefully you found that interesting and hopefully you're gonna have a go now and see what you can come up with. Remember, be creative, be inventive, have fun with it, use as many different mediums as possible and really see what the limits of your imagination are. You've got 30 minutes to do it, go.